broadly there is a chip crisis happening. And I've heard sort of conflicting descriptions of, of, of just how bad it is. Uh, is it a disaster? Would you describe it as such? Would you even describe it as a crisis? Well, I mean, it, the, there is no getting away from the fact that uh, demand is outstripping supply, uh, and it is an issue. Um, you know, you, you were just saying there that it will take a time to resolve. It will, you know, the equipment from people like Applied Materials and, and LAM, these are massively complex pieces of equipment that take time to build, take time to deploy in foundries. So it is going to take some time to, uh, to resolve itself. But I wouldn't call the situation at the moment a disaster. Um, you know, I've been at ARM for 30 years now, and while there's never been a dull day, I actually think we're in one of the most interesting moments uh, in the semiconductor industry's uh, history, because uh, the, the demand that we're seeing isn't just from one sector of the end market, uh, it's expansion that's going on in multiple end markets simultaneously. Uh, and that creates an incredible situation where uh, companies are gonna innovate, companies are gonna bring new solutions to market. And I think the next few years are gonna be fascinating as we see all of this play out. Right, it's not just consumer electronics and phones and laptops, but cars and microwaves and washing machines and refrigerators. In your view then, when do you think this will be behind us? I've heard from others, uh, we'll get more supply in the second half of the year, um, but, but some have said it's gonna be a couple of years before uh, there's a better balance. Yeah, as, as you said, that demand is all over the place, including the uh, a lot going into infrastructure that's going to fuel um, the, the kind of uh, conditions for more technology solutions in the future. Uh, you know, right now, everyone is, is working really hard to put more capacity in that can be put in quickly. Um, but I think, you know, some of the um, you know, longer term investments will take some time. You know, you don't just quickly put up a fab and fill it up with equipment. That does take time. And at the same time, people really need to plan out those investments thinking for the long term. You know, we're talking about investments of tens of billions of dollars investments that uh, where the payback period is not short term, you've got to think about uh, depreciating that over many years. So everybody in the supply chain you know, needs to be thinking about what those longer term forecasts look like, how much capacity to put in, because as we solve the short term issues, what we don't want to do is actually break the industry, end up having way too much supply and finding that that then uh, subsequently drains profitability and no one can afford to invest in the R&D. So it's a very carefully balanced thing. Um, uh, Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo holding this CHIP Summit today, uh, you know, multiple different companies involved in that to talk about what they can do short term and long term to alleviate the crisis. I recently spoke to ARM CEO Lisa Hsu about what she thinks needs to be done to prevent this from happening again. Take a listen. We have incredibly, incredibly innovative and, um, uh, you know, strong capability here. It's on us to make sure that we maintain that leadership. So um, I, I wouldn't say I, I worry about it from the standpoint of worry. I would say that I am determined <laughs> to do our part in uh, ensuring that we are, uh, you know, we're doing the right things and investing in the right areas and, and developing the right talent to continue that leadership. By we, she's talking about the U.S. more broadly and the U.S. investing in R&D and the talent and manufacturing needed to produce more chips. And I'm curious, Simon, it, Arm is obviously a global company. You've got headquarters in London. You're based in the Bay Area. Are you concerned that the U.S. Um, and Europe are falling behind in, in competitiveness in the chip industry compared to China, compared to Taiwan? And what do you think needs to be done to prevent that from happening? Well, you know, over the last few decades, we've seen uh, the industry become very efficient in the way that uh, manufacturing is done and the way that R&D is done. You know, that's helped drive um, a ton of innovation and it's driven down the cost of all the electronics that we rely on every day. Um, the, the last year has, has shown that there are some fragilities in, in that situation that we have. Um, and it is good to see that governments are, are realizing the importance of semiconductors um, to everyone. Uh, and are looking for ways to make sure that uh, we have a robust industry for the future. Um, the, the challenges ahead are, are, are significant. It's going to require a lot of R&D, uh, and it is good to see that that is the focus of where uh, government-funded R&D dollars are, are going to go. So I, I see this as a positive trend. Um, as I said a moment ago, I think it's important that we uh, do end up making sure that we design uh, an efficient industry uh, that can keep driving, keep afford to drive the R&D and keep afford to uh, expand the capacity in the right ways. 
Now, let's talk about these massive shipping numbers that you've put out. I'm curious what this means for ARM's finances. You said in the past that ARM would be investing heavily to increase its footprint and its capabilities. Where are you in that process? Yeah, when we were acquired by SoftBank, it gave us the opportunity to invest into our roadmap and look for the technologies that were going to be needed for the markets that we anticipated were going to grow and you know, that we are now seeing growing and, and are really set for uh, quite significant growth in the future. So I'm really pleased with uh, how the investments we've made over the last four or five years have been playing out. Um, and we're seeing that come through in our numbers. Our partners shipped 25 billion chips based on ARM technology in 2020. Uh, you mentioned some of the stats at the beginning there. You know, it really is quite incredible. And for us, what's, uh, when we pick through all the numbers internally, you know, what I'm really pleased about is the growth in areas like data center, in networking, actually in automotive, where we've seen significant growth year on year, and the continued pervasiveness of uh, ARM's technology in the embedded and, and the IoT space. So across the board, we've seen a really strong performance uh, in the end markets in which we operate. Now, you mentioned SoftBank there. Of course, there was the SoftBank deal a few years ago. Now you're the subject of a $40 billion acquisition attempt by NVIDIA. I know I ask you this every time you come on, but we're all curious <laughs> for an update in terms of the approval process. I know it's been a little complicated, but where are we in that process? And when are we going to have a deal or are we going to have a deal? <laughs> Well, we're confident that there's going to be a deal for sure. We're working through the process, and you know, as as I say every time we speak, you know, we set out an 18-month timeline back in uh, September last year. <clears throat> so that would mean that in about a year's time, uh, our deal will have closed. We believe we're on track to complete that. So we're working through with the regulators around the world, answering their questions, helping explain exactly where we sit in the uh, supply chain, which of course is incredibly topical right now. Um, but that for us, that process is on track. Um, there's a lot of work going on within it, of course, uh, but we're confident that we're going to get to the end and, and successfully uh, uh, close this deal. Now, ARM chips are very strong in the markets that you're in. I know that you've been pushing into PCs, pushing into servers, but um, we've seen less progress there. Where would you say uh, you are in terms of your targets and what progress have you made in getting into that market in particular? Um, you, you mean data center PCs, that, that kind of general computing market? Yes. Yeah. So um, in, in data center, uh, we're really pleased with the progress over the last year. Uh, we've seen strong growth, uh, strong adoption of our technology in, in the AWS with their Graviton 2 processors. That's going really well. We're seeing innovation amongst our partners. Uh, just yesterday, uh, one of our partners, Ampere, announced a 128-core uh, ARM-based design and uh, a number of uh, customer wins that they have with that. So we're, we're, we've seen great growth over last year. Uh, like I say, double-digit growth for us in terms of units and, and revenue uh, out of that sector in our results. Um, in, the, in the PC space, um, you know, Windows 10 runs, runs nicely on ARM. Uh, I've been using a Windows 10 PC throughout this whole period of working from home and, and that works just great. And we're anticipating more innovations in that space, more use of technology in, in laptops, in Chromebooks, um, in, as we increase the performance that we deliver to allow these general purpose compute solutions.